Hey, my name is Richie Blanton. I'm a music director, a musician, and a producer. And today we're gonna build a song uh, to be used as a backing track with my wedding and event band called The Residence in my Ableton Live template. Let's go. All right, we are gonna build a song out to be used as a backing track with the song Levitating by Dua Lipa. If this type of content is interesting to you, please like, subscribe, share, all the good things. Um, so to be clear, I'm not making the content, I'm not producing content, I already have the tracks, but I'm putting the tracks in this template so that they can be easily imported into our set list and it can control our lighting, it'll give us clicks, it'll give us guides, it'll tell us where we are in the song, I can repeat things, I can do all kinds of cool stuff, I can route things. Um, I'll take time to put every song in a template like this and it's all really easy to mess with. If I wasn't making a video, I could build this in about five minutes. Probably take longer as I'm talking through it, but I am gonna go really, really quickly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go find the tracks in my browser. Accession levitating, here they are. So first thing I wanna do before I pull the tracks in is get the live's tempo right. So it's supposed to be 103, that's what that says. Then I'm gonna drag these in. And there we go. First thing I'm gonna do is highlight all the tracks. Now I'm going to warp them. I'm going to leave them all on beats for now. I'll probably change that later because I do think I'm going to have to transpose these. The next thing I'm going to do is take this original track and put it in the original track in my template. And I use that to have a song reference if we might need it for a rehearsal or just it's just good to have. And so what I'm going to do now is mute the backing tracks and turn on the original track because it'll be helpful as we build more content. The next thing I'm doing is going to session view my template. I have a lot of helpful tools there. And one thing it has is a tempo track, which is just a blank audio track. Click it, put the tempo of the song in, click follow, turn it to lead. And this tells Ableton, hey, don't listen to the tempo that's in the session. Instead, let this track decide the tempo. And what that lets us do, and I'm relabeling it, is that when I pull this song in to a set list, um, it lets our tempo go with us. So I've got the original, I've got the track, I've got the tempo track. The next thing I'm gonna do is pull in a click. Here's my click track, it is a MIDI click. So I'm gonna hit tab. Again, this all is saved in my template, which I'd highly recommend you doing. It saves me a ton of time. So this is just a MIDI clip. I'll click it so you can see, I double click it. You can see it's playing a click for me. Here's what that sounds like. There you go. I'm going to have to be a little careful because if I play too much of this, I'll get copyrighted. But um, maybe we can get by with the intro and see if it's all synced up. There you go. All right, so we've got our click. We've got our tempo. The next thing is to build out these song sections. This is just a MIDI clip that I name certain clips of. So I can know song sections like intro, verse, chorus, that kind of thing. All I do here to just keep things looking nice is I click the tempo clip above it. I hit my down arrow key. You can see the whole track's highlighted. Then I hit shift command M and that gives me one big MIDI clip. And I'll open it like this. Open this so I can see it too. And then I use the command, command um, or shortcut, excuse me, command E to split the clip. Command R to rename and I'll name this count in. I'll name this intro. And then I will name this verse one. And I'll do the rest sped up here. All right, we're back. All these markers are built, so I'll just show you. It shows me where the song is. Verse one, pre-chorus, chorus one, all that. I do try to give notes to myself in here. Like I put tags, fly away. That's when she sings, you can fly away on me tonight. In case I need to cue the band. Um, drums, halftime, down chorus, that kind of thing. The other note is I try to make sure, like here's two instrumentals. They're the same progression, but I just like seeing that there's two of them rather than one long one. That just helps me dynamically when I'm looking at this live. It helps me play it better. And um, yeah, it just helps me a lot. The next thing I'm going to do just to keep things tidy is at every ending, I don't know why I started doing this, but I just I cut everything off so it's just two bars. So trim this up and that looks better. All right, so the next thing we'll do is add guide cues. I used to just use an audio guide track, which is totally fine. 
Uh, but I started using a MIDI guide. So right here, this is just a drum rack. I'll show you. Chorus, pre-chorus, verse. And what I did, lets me do this pretty quick, is I made a session called MIDI Guide Cues. And it's got all these clips in it that just have all of these preloaded. So like for count off, I can just pull this clip in and they kind of warp funny, so they're like that. And then that's one bar, here's two bars, I could pull verse in and then you get this. Intro, two, three, four, verse, two. That kind of thing. So it makes this process really quick. I'm just pulling these in. There's pre-chorus, chorus. And these are all two bars, but I only want one bar. There we go. Um, and the good thing about the MIDI guide cues that I have liked is if I want to make it a different count in, or I need to edit it, or it needs to say drums out or something, it just leaves me a lot of flexibility. And it also keeps all my guide cues because I'm building them all in the same MIDI uh, using the same MIDI instrument, um, the volumes are all the same. I've, I've learned in the past, just the way I export things, with audio guide cues, it just feels like their volumes get all over the place. So this keeps them really consistent. And I mean, you can tell, again, I can't emphasize enough, just building out templates and putting things in your templates that are really going to help you um, save you a ton of time. Pre-chorus, chorus. I mean, we're already we're almost done building cues already. And again, once I save it like this, it's easy to pull into a set, and it'll just it'll always work correctly. Again and again, shout out to us from studio to stage. That guy has saved me much time having to learn things. All right, there it is. Uh, let's make this ending to two big counts, two bars. A uh, little thing I do, I always say end if it's like a crash out and ending if it's a hard cut like this song. Um, I don't know if that's helpful, but it convinces myself. I convince myself of this. The next thing we're going to do is copy all of those and then pull them down to this what's called dynamic guide cue section. And for this, this is if we ever want to repeat a section. These are the guide cues that will be cued. So for this one, all the guides need to be put to the end of the song section. I can explain that more in a different video. But for now, just know like this chorus cue actually needs to come at the end of the chorus because it will be used if we ever repeat the chorus. So now I'm just dragging them all into place. Eventually they should all kind of line up a little bit, but they're not they're not playing nice for me. There we go. Chorus. This will all this part will make a lot more sense in a few moments. Now, these are all lined up correct, except this final chorus is not correct. I'll move that one there, and then we don't need this ending. All right, so all of our guide cues are done. Now the last thing I like to do with guide cues for my own sanity is hit join, and I'll write levitating guide cues. And I'll come down here, and I'll join those, and I'll write levitating. I can't spell. Dynamic guide cues. Um, and that didn't like bounce them down or anything. They're still MIDI clips, but it, it just looks cleaner when I pull things in. All right, the next thing we're going to do is um, work on what's called this repeat track. And all this is is a MIDI cue that hits this previous locator button um, so that what happens is when I hit a button on my MIDI controller, um, or right now my keyboard, the button R, you'll see the repeat track gets turned on, the dynamic guide turns on, and it'll repeat whatever section I want it to repeat. So the way I do that, I go again into my template here, I grab my previous clip, I just copied it, and then I paste it at the end of every single section. Which I just grab Option, and I Option drag, whoops down the wrong way. So I get for trying to talk and do something. Like that. That's all of them. It sure is. I'll show you how this works really quick. The way it, the, the only way to make it work, you have to have locators on everything. So I add one here and here. Um, and I will solo, let's see here. I'll leave click on and guide cues on and that should be enough for you to get the gist. 
So you'll see this should cue instrumental. Instrumental three four. And then verse. Verse two. Alright. So now what happens is if I hit instrumental and I hit R for a P, watch. Instrument two, three, four. Listen to the cue. Instrument two, three, four. And it played the instrumental again. And it'll repeat verse that. Two until I hit R again and turn it off. So that's why we do the dynamic guide cues. That's why we do the repeat track. All right, so we got repeat track done, dynamic guides done. Um, that's that's everything on that end. So the next thing I do is I grab all my tracks. I'm gonna turn them back on and turn my rhythm track off so I don't forget. Yep, that's all good. Um, I delete this guide, I don't need it. And I've always put these in order of percussion, face, background vocals last. Uh, it's kind of the order I use when I mix things, but I group all these together, levitating. I'll, I'll color it. Uh, we'll do that color, assign track color to all group tracks, so they're all the same color. And then, um, so that's done, and then all I do is go into session view, and I want to see my sends and returns in session view. Everything is routed through sends and returns. I find that's really easy. When I'm routing outputs on my interface, then I have to change everything. So what I do for levitating is I go to audio two, sends only, and then I start routing. So drums and percussion go to send A. Uh, synth bass goes to send, uh, send C. Synths and pads go to send F. And I'm looking at all this right here, by the way. Background vocals go to H. And that... That should, whoops. Change that. And that also gives me a master volume over the song. So if that's all routed correctly, everything should play right. So again, with this, I will be able to pull this into my um, Ableton Live template when I do a set list uh, really easily. I'll be able to repeat quickly. I use an app called Ableset that will automatically add locators for me. I'll be able to repeat anything. I'll be able to jump around song sections if I need to. I'll be able to create clean transitions, but but most of all, the, the thing is when I'm playing drums and I look over and the song is running like this, left to right, I can just see what's going on and that's super helpful. If you have any questions, please comment below. Let me know. The only thing I did forget is I will plug in MIDI lighting right here, um, but those are just MIDI tracks. Thanks guys.